Okay, folks. Now we're entering in to the to the great room of our house, and we're going to pan real slow to see uh, let you see what some of the the facilities here. We go right over here, and this will lead up into a bedroom. And then right here, we have our freezer. Now we'll explain all these. And then right there is kind of the nerve center of the universe. That's Paula's desk. And then we slowly go over here, and you'll see the ambient regulator. Now we will explain that thing in detail. Okay, then we go right over here, and you will see more or less the kitchen area. And there's the uh, the, the the washing machine. Quite a unique little critter there. And there's the storage for all of your your kitchen materials. Now this whole house can be a kitchen. It can be a workshop. It can be a den. There's the back window there, and it'll it leads out. And you can see all kinds of neat things. Now, these barrels right here are empty. They can be filled with water. We'll explain that. And that's the door to the greenhouse, believe it or not. And right here is the. We have a Berkey water filter, and we'll tell you all about that. And then right here is our little cooking area. This is all a lab, and we're determining how much methane and natural gas you, you need to use. Now, we can create all that. And there's our little desk there. And then we got some more barrels here. Then let's move right over here, and you will see a compost toilet. Now, we're going to explain that thing in detail for those of you who aren't familiar with them. They're very, very popular. Okay, now... We're going to just going to go just a little bit higher here, and you will see all the garage and the hobby areas stored right here. Just a, you can reach right up there, and we must have 70, 80 of these boxes, and you have a total, complete access instantly to everything you need. There's no need for an attic. You know, we solved that a long time ago. Uh, everything is organized. You can put immense amounts of material up there. You see how neat that is? And fishing tackle, hobby sewing, you know, whatever you need. Okay, now Paul is going to go over and we're going to show you the inside of the freezer. Now this is kind of an interesting freezer. It's what most of the world, at least Europe, is going to. They're all going to chest top type freezers. And this is the little sun dancer. Uh, okay, Paul, open it up, and we'll see if we can get in there a little bit. Okay, you see we've got just about everything. Let me get a little closer. Let's see if I can zoom in on this, okay? There you go, sort of, I guess. doesn't show it very good. But we have more stuff in there, and you can adapt this. The bottom freezes, and the top is sort of a refrigerator. Now, you can, they say that you can take... They say that you can take a couple of these things and put them side by side, probably more than a couple, and you can run them all at the same time and they will use less electricity than one of our, uh, the stateside's most efficient freezers. And well, that's something to consider, but it's easy to, that's a DC freezer. Now, they used to have one that ran straight off the sun. This is a 12 volt house. And so, if you can change a battery and a bulb and a flashlight, you can operate the whole electrical system of this house. Okay, that's Paul's little nerve center. Let's go right over here to what is known as the ambient regulator. Now, this little sucker here took a lot of years to develop it. And my first concepts of this, well, I was about 12 years old, and I, I kept telling people where I was living that you didn't have to uh, use uh, fuel to heat your home if you just put one of these in. This isn't exactly solar because this is way in the back of the house. And uh, it's just a long story and I've used it all over the world. And what happens is we've actually changed the house into a Mediterranean climate in the middle of winter. This is pretty nice. Those tanks, uh, they absorb heat by conduction not by radiation. And so the, 
light will come in through the windows, whether it's any kind of light, and they stay the same temperature all year. Well, just a degree or two off. Uh, they'll stay about 70 degrees. In the hottest of temperatures, they will go up to maybe 10 degrees. In the lowest of temperatures, a meter of snow out there, they will go down to maybe 60 degrees. Now, I had to sort of fool Mother Nature in this. See, water will absorb heat real fast out of the BTUs and the kilojoules, but it gives it off fast. And so I've got these cement blocks solid, just filled with cement and angle iron. Now, as the heat goes up, you see, it goes up into tanks you can't see it that empty them into the bedroom. And in order for that heat to escape, you see, heat will absorb slow in concrete blocks, but it gives it off slow. And so all the heat goes up fast, and then it takes 8, 10, 12 hours to go through those cement blocks. So the thing is that the bedrooms stay at about 70 degrees the whole year long. It's kind of fooling Mother Nature. And this is what you're looking at here is actually the foundation of the house. We have no foundation under the house. It's built on the whole thing. It's just nothing but a mountain of solid rock. And so this is what is known as unit construction. There are no nails in this house. Everything is bolted to the cement tower. It's a chimney, we call it. It's a chimney that goes no place. And uh, we've tried to explain the concept to engineers because the tanks never get hot or cold. And they just, you know, they'll scratch their heads because water has to get hot. No, but it doesn't. And so what we've done is we've just uh, uh, created a different environment. Anyway, there's no tubes, no anything, no electrical outlets, no, uh, you know, for years and years, this house will stay the same temperature as Costa Rica or Panama or wherever you want. You can just sort of determine what climate you want to live in in the middle of winter. And there's, there's just a half a dozen tanks there. Okay. Now we're going to move over here and we're going to take a look at our washing machine. Okay. Paul is going to open the washing machine. And this is another very interesting washing machine. It uses like four or five gallons for a wash and another four or five for a rinse. This one here looks like it's a top-loading washing machine, but it's, it has a little interesting catch here. This is a, a staver. All over the world are starting to use them. I don't know if you saw that. But, you want me to do it again? Yeah, sure. no, no, no. Go ahead. I got it all here, Paul. Just stick some stuff in. What's neat about this sucker is it's actually a front-loading type washing machine and you can hold near 20 pounds of wash in this sucker. And since it uses very, very little water, and so if you use, if you do two loads at a time, that's only 15 gallons. And you only really, when you time it, you only have to do a wash every couple of weeks. Uh, and this sucker will suck. When this thing goes into spin, there's no water left at all in those clothes. Uh, there's almost no gears in this thing, almost impossible for anything to happen. And if anything does, like something gets plugged up in the, in the pump or something, well, you just open the front here and you pull it out. It's built backwards inside, and it has a chip instead of gears. And they're almost entirely foolproof, okay? Do you want me to explain how it closes? It okay, just close it's a top loading water washer, but it functions... When it when it cycles, instead of agitating, it uh, it it goes around like a front loading washer. That's why it's like a front loading washer. But it just clips. And it together. it only it uses like about a, there was an ounce of of soap. Less than an ounce. Of soap. Less than an ounce of soap. soap. soap and it, we've used five gallons to wash and then five gallons to rinse. And when we're do we we try to work it out to use. Two load to wash two loads. First the light lo white clothes, and then with a, with the rinse water from that, we use that to wash the the dark clothes. The, uh, the, so we're reusing, so we're reusing the water. So we're we're using. She's sort of cute, isn't she? So, so <laughs> we're doing a more conservative use of water, and that we're conserving the use of water. So we're using 15 gallons for two loads. Five to wash, five to rinse. The first load. Will be five to wash, five to rinse, but the would you not do that? The second second load is not 
you're ruining your cake this way. The second load is begins with the rinse water from, from the first load, five gallons there, and then it begins uh, the second load second load is rinsed with a fresh with fresh water. Okay, now all the water that we use there we will be reusing it again when we put it in the greenhouse. This right here you can take a look is the uh, the kitchen area and we store a lot a lot of food here. This thing, this little it's underneath the stairs to the top bedroom and you'll take a look that we can you know the pantry is immense. Okay now let's just go over here and there's these tanks now this is part of an experiment we had for the winter. Uh, they can either be filled with water, they're empty right now. And what they do is during the winter time they absorb the radiation directly that comes in low. And it'll, you know, if you need a little extra energy, uh, but we find out we really don't need it here in about a 40 degree parallel, but that's just something we do. This is a, the whole house is a lab. Uh, the wood floors you see here, the outside is steel and there's a steel structures going up and underneath every five feet and this here is uh, tongue and groove yellow pine and they're spaced five feet apart and so the, this floor isn't terribly I mean if you fall on it, it's not like cement uh, they give us they just give a little bit it's like walking on a ship and for a marine biologist that's sort of nice okay and so you don't break any hips or anything.